Good evening, hi. Uh, my name is Cora Langford and I'm with Overcome by Love Ministry. I'm sorry I got a little uh, nervous there for a second, but I just wanna thank you for joining me tonight. Um, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, I just wanted to share with you a few things. Um, I'm waiting for women to join me, other women. I wanna see a panel of women that will be sitting here with me and we are going to be discussing so many topics about um, so many different things about your family and about your husband, about wives, about your children, about issues, um, about teenagers and the things that they have to go through and in the intervention, you know, how do we handle this type of stuff? And it's gonna be amazing. So I just wanna open up in prayer first. And uh, so um, for all those who are joining me right now, thank you. God bless each and every one of you. Anyway, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just come to you right now, Father, and I just submit and surrender everything to you, Lord, and that these words that are coming out of my mouth, Lord, will be your words, Father, and that you will touch someone tonight, Father, with your fire, Lord. And, and Lord, Holy Spirit, just do an amazing thing tonight, Lord, as I'm by myself, but, but really I'm not because I have thousands of angels that are surrounding me right now and and i feel the glory lord and i feel your presence with me right now and i thank you lord that you will touch someone tonight lord who needs a special touch lord maybe they just need a word of encouragement father or maybe need that they need a prophetic word father whatever it is healing father god i ask you right now lord to bless them to heal them to touch them lord as you have touched me in jesus name amen, amen. So anyway, I'm so excited for what God is doing. Um, I just want to, first of all, give God all the glory for everything that he's ever done in my life. And I just have a little song that I would just like to play for a few minutes. And it's called Free Worshipper by um, Vicki Yohi. Amen. I'll never be bound again. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Hallelujah. We are free. Hallelujah.
Yes, we're free. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm free. Yes, I'm free. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord. You're free tonight. You're all free tonight. Hallelujah. Yes. Free worshiper, yes. If we can praise and worship God whenever we want, we are free. Anyway, we thank God for that beautiful song. That's uh, Vicki Yogi and Free Worship. So tonight what I want to share is I want to give you a background about me and about what God has done in my life so that maybe some of the things that you're going through that maybe you'll have hope and, and maybe something that that's spoken to you tonight, you'll, you'll have enough confidence and courage to trust in God because he loves you so much. So tonight, I wanted to give you a definition about hope. It says that hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. A desire, it's an aspiration, it's a goal, it's a plan. It's to cherish a desire with anticipation. To want something to happen, something to be true. It says in, in 1 Peter 1, 3 and 5, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time hallelujah so our Lord gives us a hope he gives us desires in our hearts he he plants those things in us when we're little kids when we're children I mean it's even before we're even born he he, he, he knows what, what's going to happen to all of us. He has a plan for all of us. And, and the thing is, is that we have to have hope in order to live life. Because that's what God is. God is hope, and God is life, and God is love. And so therefore, we have to receive that from Him. We have to get it. Some of us don't get it. Some of us let it walk away. And, and, and God is always there for us, no matter what. Even through the worst of times, even though we have left God, God has not left us. And so tonight, what I want to do is share a little bit of my testimony. And, and hopefully that will encourage someone. 
Um, and, and it's kind of like, uh, I feel sometimes, um, I, I'm not ashamed anymore. I, in fact, I never talked about my situation, uh, as, as a, an adult, or I never said anything to uh, my family when I was younger, when, when the situation happened to me, or even when I was in college. And I'm going to share those things. And, um, you know, it's one thing is, is to be free. And as Vicki Yohi was singing that song about free, that we're free to worship. And I'm telling you that really, we truly are in America. We are so free to worship, to speak, to sing, to dance. I mean, we, we, we have it all. And, and it's, and we have to thank God for that. Because for those of you who have never left America and have gone to, have never gone to another country like China or um, Egypt or some of these other places um, where it's very difficult, where Christianity isn't accepted, then you would experience really the freedom that we have here in America and really not the freedom that we have in another country. We are actually so blessed as Americans as well because let me tell you that passport our little blue passport we don't need to receive invitations or get invitations to go to another country we can just go like we just go and go to the ticket booth or you know go online and and get a ticket and you decide that you want to go somewhere you can go you don't need an invitation but other countries like Uganda Egypt China, most of these countries, Pakistan, they need invitations. So it's like we need to send them an invitation for them to come to America. And that's just, you know, on a visitation, like as a tour thing. But I just want to stress that because we don't realize the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ and in knowing Jesus and, and, and being blessed by Jesus and and, and being able to pray, pray whenever we need to. I mean, it is just absolutely powerful that we can express, that we can show people in love, our tenderness, kindness, um, so much. And, 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 and be humble at the same time and, and respect people. And, and, and we can agree to disagree with people but in a loving way, because that's what God wants. He wants us to, to respect each other. And, and, and it's okay to disagree. Everyone has their opinion, but to express it in love. And, and if you have to criticize, then you know, do constructive criticism and do it in a loving way. Because you always have to think, how would Jesus talk? How would, how would Jesus talk to you if, if he knew things that you did it's just like the lady, you know, the lady who had so many, who had been with so many men. He didn't condemn her. He forgave her. He didn't even bring up the point about her being out with these men. He just said, be blessed and don't sin anymore. Can you imagine if we all just did that? If we just would just like look at situations and, and don't look at that situation, but maybe encourage that person to get out of that situation in a loving and godly way. Our world would be in such a much better, it would be so much better, you know. But, but tonight, it says um, in Psalm 71, 15 through 18, um, and I want to turn to that scripture here really quick. And this is talking about being a witness and, and, and sharing testimonies. It says, My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day. For I do not know their limits. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, of yours only. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. And to this day I declare wondrous work. Now also when I'm old and gray-headed, 
Oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. That scripture, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. My mouth has been his, has been his centerpiece for me in my life. And I thank God that, that he's given me this tongue to speak. And that he's given me boldness and confidence in myself and, and to know who I am in him. And to know that I can be assured that my God, my Father, my Heavenly Father, Jesus, is with me. And there's no doubt in my mind the things that he can do because I've already seen so many things that he's done. And I have to share because... This scripture is, is so important to me because I grew up Catholic and I went to Catholic school. I even grew up in a, in a Catholic um, a school, okay? And, and it wasn't until um, my mom had remarried my stepfather and, and um, my, my grandmother was a evangelist and a Pentecostal evangelist. And so I was... Um, I was I was really blessed by this woman of God because it was only her love through through Jesus that she came and I'm telling you it was like 40 of our family members who received Jesus that day that she came and yes I mean it was you know first you know we received Jesus and and and, and we accepted Jesus into our hearts and we asked Jesus to forgive us of all of our sins and we, and we made him our Lord and Savior and and I did that at the age of 11 years old. And I remember even receiving the Holy Spirit and, and speaking in tongues at a very young age. I had dreams and visions back then. And I used to write um, poetry. And, and my aunts would say, wow, this is so beautiful. This poetry is so beautiful. And you should put it in the paper. And, and I just thought, well, it's just, I don't know. I just, I, I guess I'm a good writer. But really it was the Holy Spirit at that age that was showing me back then, you know, who I was, even though I really didn't know who I was. And and so that that's the reason why, you know, this this scripture is so important because see, even though I received Jesus back then and, and we were going to church all the time and and I knew the salvation. I, I felt the presence of Jesus. I saw Jesus. I mean, I saw him, I would see him all the time in my visions, and, and he was always, it seems like he was just always sharing his pure love with me. I mean, his pure love. And, and so that's what kept me, I believe, um, through my junior high and high school, and, and I mean, really throughout my whole life, but, but really it was, I, I received the foundation of learning about the Bible and God's Word when I was in junior high and high school. And and I never knew, like I, I always thought back then, like I, I'll never leave Jesus. Like he was he was the love of my life. Like I knew there was something spiritual, something good about him. And 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 it wasn't until later that in fact all my family, my brothers, we all kind of strayed from from the Lord and going to church because we were we were always had to go to church like we had to get up to go to sunday school and then we'd go to church and then we'd come home rest eat and then we'd go back to church and so i think all of us kids there were seven of us kids and so we all felt like oh my gosh why do we have to go to church again you know and we would complain like mom and dad why do we have to you know go to church and having to wake up early in the morning but but they did they got us up and now i can i really thank god they did that back you know back then because because I, I didn't know that, that that would be the source of my life, that that would be the change, the, the transformation of my life, that I would go back to that. And see that that's the great thing about Jesus, that he always brings you back to his goodness. It's not about going back to the past of reliving all the things that you went through. No, God wants you to go through those things so that, it's an experience, and he wants you to have him with you so he can share and tell you how to get out of it. Because the enemy is the one that puts you there, and God sometimes will allow that to happen. And, and, and really, you have to know 
when the enemy is attacking you and when God is trying to show you something. See, all we always think, oh, it's the enemy, it's the enemy, enemy. No, you know what? Sometimes we do things to self-destruct ourselves because maybe we're not listening to God or what God is saying to us. So I have to encourage you to listen to the Holy Spirit. So anyway, in, in, this, in this scripture, it's, it's sem, uh, Psalm 71, 15 through 18. You can read it and let the Holy Spirit minister, minister to you with it. Because, you know, I, would never, I never thought that I would ever be coming back and speaking <laughs> to, to you, to the world, and, and traveling the world to speak about Jesus and about his salvation, about what he did to me and how he transformed my life. And so I want to share my testimony because I know there's a lot of people out there, both men and women, who have gone through this. What I have gone through, there's a lot of people who have gone through it and people do not like to talk about it. But today I'm going to share this with you because I feel that it's important so that you can see what, what God has done in my life. What the enemy tried to do for evil, God has turned around my whole life. I mean, he has totally turned me around for his goodness, for his glory. Amen. And I just give him the glory and I thank him. And, you know, I don't know why I always seem to have this <laughs> tears. You know, I'm always like kind of choked up a little bit. But that's because the Holy Spirit in my life. And, and I have to share because it's the love of Jesus that... that my ministry is called Overcome by Love, and, and that's because I have been. I have been overcome by His love, by His pure love, by His pure anointing. And that's why I have to speak. That's why I have to tell the truth about everything about me and what God has done in my life. So, as I mentioned, I grew up as a Catholic and, and, and then I was raised in a Pentecostal church. And it wasn't until I uh, left um, home to college did I uh, depart from the Lord. And, um, you know, it was kind of like one of those things to where um, I wanted to go out and party. I wanted to go out and have a boyfriend. I wanted to experience life. I wanted to do all those bad things. Um, it, it wouldn't have been so bad if, you know, some of the things that I did... Um, were you know low key like maybe if I had my boyfriend um, you know come and you know we sat in in the house and my mom and dad were there but no I went things a little bit further than that so but anyway um, at the age of about seven years old till about the age of eleven till I got saved I was molested um, by my stepfather and. And then later on in college, I was raped two times. And, um, you know, there, there came a, a time of, of really unforgiveness because when you don't forgive, and even though maybe as a little girl, I, I, I think I kind of forgave because it seems like I forgave my stepfather. I never said anything to him. In fact, I never said anything to anyone because of the shame and the guilt. I mean, that's like, I mean, who wants to ever talk about that stuff? I mean, it was very difficult, and I kept that thing hidden in my heart, in my soul, for years. I mean, years. I mean, probably for, I'm going to say over 40 years or so, I kept it hidden. And I, I didn't want to talk about it. I knew what had happened. I had talked to my husband about it at that time when I was married and because of the situations that uh, we had been doing drugs and, and partying and drinking and, and all this kind of stuff, we were not living the life for God at all. Um, in fact, I mean, I, we would go to church every now and then, but I was not living my life for God. I knew the Holy Spirit. I would feel the Holy Spirit when I would go to church, but again, I was not living my life for God. And um, there was always something inside me, like I always knew, like if there was, if I was driving and I would feel, you know, I would hear something or something would tell me like, slow down or move over. 
And I always thought that that was luck. Like, I'm so lucky. And, and I would claim it as luck. And, and so even in the workplace, um, we would have these uh, bowls. Like you would, um, if it was a Super Bowl or something like that, we would put in, you know, $10, $20, and we'd get a square. We'd get numbers. And for whatever reason, for as many years I was working at this company, for like 16 years, I would always win. I mean, I would always win a jackpot. I would always win. I mean, people hated me because I was a winner, you know, and, and, and they just didn't understand. How come you always win? You know, here, put, give, give me some money or, you know, they would give me money, like put, put my money on, you know, a square or something. And I'm telling you, I would always win. The one year I remember, and we're sitting at a group of, of 10 people and, and I said, I'm going to win the grand prize. And they're like, no, no, you're not. Don't say that. I'm like, I'm going to win the grand prize. And so I'm just waiting, patiently waiting, waiting. And then my boss and the owner of the company, they're the ones that were, you know, calling out the names and stuff. And as soon as they started shaking their head, I knew that it was me. And then, and then as soon as, you know, they, they gave this bill or whatever, and they're like, we, we're not going to give this to this person. We're, we're not, we're not going to give it to her, you know? And then, and then I'm like, I'm the winner. I'm just like standing up on the winner. And they're like, yes, Cora, you won, you won the grand prize. And all my friends around me, they're just like, oh my gosh, like this girl is unbelievable because it was like, see back then God was even sharing. Like I didn't realize that he was, the words that I was speaking were coming to life. Okay. He was saying like they were coming to life. And, and so, you know, now then when I go back and look back at all the things that happened in my life and, and how, like I say, I was lucky, but really it was blessings over my life. It was God's favor over my life that I would, you know, have so many opportunities to win money. And, and of course, gambling is not of God, but I wasn't, you know, living the life for God. So, um, Lord, forgive me for that. But, but anyway, um, but let me go back to the situation. So, so the Holy Spirit would speak to me, but I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. I just thought it was me. I thought it was like some, something that was, I was just so lucky. Okay. So, so it wasn't until, you know, I, I started really coming into ministry. Did I realize that all these years I've been hearing God, <laughs> I've been hearing him. I just wasn't listening to him. I wasn't listening to him, you know, to do what he wanted me to do. I was doing what Cora wanted to do. I, want, I was doing what the enemy wanted me to do. I was going that route, okay? And when you get into drugs and alcohol, let me tell you, you're, you're going into some deep things. And I'm telling you, it's, it's satanic. It's evil. It's demonic. Because I'm telling you, when I was doing drugs, I would see demons. And I'm telling you, I would see demons running around the room. And, 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 and I would see these black things, okay? So back then, I was seeing that stuff. And I was like, oh, it's just the drugs. It's just the drugs. But really, it wasn't the drugs. It was, it was because God made me a seer, a visionary, a dreamer. I could see those things in the spirit. I could see it. And how evil these things were. And when, when my husband, back then, I would see him when he would get high first. And I would just see like this demonic, this demon take over his body. But yet we still kept on doing it. Like, like we weren't, like we weren't scared or anything. We just kept on doing it. And, but it came to a point in my life where I didn't, I, I didn't like it. I never liked it. I was just doing it because my husband and... And yes, you know, I have to be accountable for that stuff. Yeah, I did it. You know, and I guess I, I didn't know why I was doing it because I hated drugs. I got molested because of drugs. So why would I turn to drugs? You know, it's like what Paul says in the Bible, you know, the things that you hate, you know, the, some of the times are things that you become. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm becoming what I hated. But see, God's grace and his love for all of us, he can take us out. He can pull us out of it when, when we're willing to change. And so, so after so many years of doing that and meeting the most craziest people, the most 
demonic people I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband, you know, they were wanting to go and rob and 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 with these big guns and everything and and I'm like, oh my gosh! Like when when he brought this gun to me, it was a I, I want to say it was some sort of shotgun, sawed off shotgun. And when he brought that home, I was like, you gotta get that out of here! No way! What are you doing with that thing? That now that thing scared me because I knew that that gun represented death. That gun represented death, and so I didn't want death. Okay, I mean we were having fun, but I didn't want that thing and. And, and it was because of the drugs that he was doing. That was meth. And meth is a form of speed. And speed will do crazy things. I, I think speed is one of the worst drugs ever in this world. Because it makes you think that you are invincible. That you can do anything. But then what happens you're, when you're high, and then when you come off that drug, you, you feel terrible. You have to sleep for five days after being up for three days, you know, and then and then you become irritable, you become grouchy. I mean, it, it is though is just a messed up drug. Drugs are evil. And you know, I I I I questioned myself back then, like, why am I doing drugs when I hated drugs? But you know, I now I understand that it was it was for this for today. It was for this testimony. So, so that I could help those of you who are doing drugs, who, who have been maybe having a, a trial and tribulation of trying to get off, but you just don't know how. And I'm telling you, you can go to counselors, you can go to rehabs, you can go to all those places. And I'm not saying that they're not bad, okay? They're not, they're not bad, okay? But what I'm telling you, the way that you get freedom, the only way that you can get peace the only way that you can live your life with joy and, and is by Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can take that away from you. Amen. No man, no woman, no, no, no rehabilitation, no counselor can do that for you. Only Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the only one that can totally take it away from you. I have seen and I have heard testimonies of people that have gotten saved and all of a sudden their addictions went away. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus does for us. He brings freedom to us. And so, so during that time of being married, we weren't serving God. And so, you know, eventually um, one thing led to another and I ended up getting divorced from my husband. And, and I've been uh, divorced now for about five years. And uh, I, I, I thank God because, you know, it wasn't the life that, that God had for me. It wasn't, it wasn't the light. <laughs> we were living in darkness. And I didn't like it. I didn't like being in that. I, I don't like evil. And, and, I, and I really just, you know, thank Jesus for, for delivering me. And, and he has delivered me through so many different things and, and with brokenness. Um, you know, again, about the molestation and about rape when I was in college. You know, I, when, when you get hurt like that and you never talk about it and you're not free, what happens is that the devil puts chains on you and, and then it causes unforgiveness. And, and when you have unforgiveness in your life, what happens is that um, you don't know how to love and, and you run you run to all these different places you, you think that you're bringing love to people you're not bringing love to anyone because you can't even love yourself and, and, and this is the reason why it says in, in Matthew 6, 14 and 15 that if you forgive your brother then God will forgive you if you don't forgive your brother then God will not forgive you and, and so, you know, and it says to love God with all your heart. That's the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart. And then he says to love yourself as you love your neighbor. And, you know, so many of us say, yeah, I, I love so-and-so. Yeah, I love them. But then next thing you know, you turn around and you're talking about them and you're talking about what they did to you and how the, the hurt 
is just building up inside of you. And so what happened is, is because of that unforgiveness in my life, and I knew that, that God was dealing with a lot of different things in my life, and I had to be free. I mean, in order to be a minister, and let me tell you, there's a lot of ministers out there that are not free. And I'm not judging you, and I'm not, and I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying that, that because of unforgiveness, um, there are chains that are being put on you. And, and what happens is, is that um, you, you can't love yourself. That's the first thing. And, and you're always critical of others. You are always uh, um, able to talk about people and, and not even think anything of it. Um, I mean, there's just so many different things. But, but what I have learned, and, and when I was going through this process, because your life is a process, your life is a journey with the Lord. And, and when I was going through this process, the Holy Spirit started ministering to me about forgiveness and how I was to go back to my stepfather and tell him that I forgave him. And I thought at that time, it was always about me. It was only about me. Because remember, I'm still learning things because God is transforming me and it's a process. And, and so um, finally one day, my, my father lived up in Washington. And of course, I was living here in California and went up to Washington State and I kind of arranged for a meeting with him. And anyway... Uh, that Saturday I was supposed to go and something came up and I, I couldn't do it. So I called him up and all of a sudden I kind of got scared and I hung up the phone. I mean, it was like, you know, you have your cell phone and it's ringing, ding, 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 ding. And all of a sudden, boop, I hung up. And I just kind of like froze for a minute. And then the phone rang back at me. Hello? <laughs> oh, hi, Dad. And... Next thing I know, I'm talking to him and, and I'm sharing with him and, and I'm saying, Dad, I just wanted to tell you that I forgive you for what you did to me as a little girl. I'm telling you, it was like the Holy Spirit, those words that just came out of my mouth were not me, they were the Holy Spirit. Next thing I know, he is breaking down, crying on the phone, just saying that he had asked God to forgive him so many years and that he had been tormented, tormented by the devil, by demons for many years. And I'm telling you, when, when he said that to me, I said, those chains are broken now, Dad. Forgive you. I love you. We never have to talk about this again. It's done. It's over. And I'm telling you, when that happened, it was the most amazing thing that I've ever experienced in my whole entire life. Is when I felt, I felt the love of Jesus, the pure love of Jesus, just totally like, just put his arms around me. And he just said, I love you, my daughter. It was like Jesus was like, just sharing with me, just saying, everything is good. Everything's going to get better for you. And he just started talking to me and telling me that there's so many things I have in store for you. I have plans for you. You're going to go to the world. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to preach the gospel. And you're going to share your testimony. Because there's a lot of men and women who need to hear your testimony. And I said, okay, Lord, whatever you want, Father, I will do. Because, see, I didn't know that that power, that love, the, the power of his love that came upon me can be upon you too. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to have demons tormenting you for the things that you have done in your past. You can be free. And that's why that scripture is so important. Because it talks about freedom. And even about this song about Vicki Yohi singing. It's freedom. You're free. I'm free. I can share. 
I can dance, I can laugh, I can love. And I, and I just thank God that he, he loves us so unconditionally. And what does that mean, unconditionally? It means that no matter what you do in your life, he still loves you. If you're a sinner right now, you're drinking a beer, you're doing drugs, Jesus still loves you, and he's waiting for you to come to him. I'm telling you right now, it's the truth. The devil wants to lie to you. He wants to um, bring things into your mind so that he you will think that you're unworthy, so that there's no hope, so that you can feel like, like those a penny on the ground that has been walked on, that has been trampled on, that has even been, um, you know, there's dirt on that penny. That's the way the enemy wants you to feel. That's what he wants you to be. He wants you to feel all that. He doesn't want you to believe that you're worthy and that God forgives you. He does not. He wants you to not think that. But I'm telling you the truth. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, to die for us so that we would have eternal life with him. I'm telling you the Bible will set you free. It's the only thing that will set you free. It's by the love of Jesus. And that's the reason why I had called my ministry Overcome by Love. Because it was. I was overcome by his love. Through all the obstacles. Through all the things that the devil tried to put in front of me. By me almost trying to commit suicide. I don't know. Two or three times I tried to commit suicide. I, I you know, with the drugs. Okay. And, and, and pills. Okay, so I'm telling you, it's a lie because, see, the devil knows. He knows, you know, that God's put something inside of you, and he, he's trying to stop you. He's trying to stop you. Even with my kidney stones that I had, I didn't even realize this until I'm thinking, I've had a lot of surgeries. I'm like, why have I had a lot of surgeries? And I'm thinking, that darn devil, he's trying to kill me. But you know what? <laughs> God has covered me with his blood and I shall live. I am living life right now and he wants you to live life. Okay? He rose from the dead. He took the keys from hell and he's in heaven right now sitting on the right hand side of God his Father. And he's waiting for all of us to join him. He's waiting for all of us to join him one day. So through all of that, you know, we need hope. And I want to share hope with you. I, 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 I came out of despair. I came out of unworthiness, unloved, not having confidence, not believing. I mean, there's so many things of who I was as a little girl. I mean, I was a captain. Of, of basketball, volleyball, track and field. I mean, I had it all. I was most valuable player. You know, I, I had all that stuff. God had, had put another thing inside of me. That was to be positive and to be, to be an influencer and to help your teammates and bring your teammates up with you. Don't leave anyone behind. That's who I was growing up. I didn't realize it until later on in my life, until many years later, that God had put that inside of me. Like I knew that this glass or this bottle would be full or halfway full if it was halfway full. I never, I never looked at it as being empty. I was always that, that optimistic person. Like I always believed, no, there's something. I know God can do it. I know. I just believe it will happen. Because see, God gives you dreams. He gives you goals. He wants you to have these things. Like it says in Habakkuk 2, 2, and 3. It says, write down the vision. He gives you a vision. He says, write it down. For it will happen. Even though it may wait a little. I mean, tarry means to wait. Because, you know, the wait is, the wait is you being processed. <laughs> you can't just all of a sudden become a pastor like the next day. No, you have to go through some things. God has to wash you and cleanse you and redefine you. And once he does that, then you're like that sparkling diamond. You know, the diamond is in charcoal. It's black. 
is covered in black. It's like when you touch it, it your hands become black. <clears throat> but what God does is he starts washing it, cleansing it, chipping away. You know, it's like just like the potter, you know, with the mold. He's shaping you, you know, and transforming you into his image, into his likeness. And once that happens, then all of a sudden you become the person that God wants you to be. You become the minister, the servant, the, the humble person, you know, the, the woman of God, the man of God the pastor, the prophet, the apostle. You know, these are the things that God wants you to be. And even if you're a cook, God will use you. God will use you for anything as long as you have a willing heart. Yes. And I have a willing heart. My heart is willing to serve God. After all the things that I've ever gone through in my life, I mean, that's just a few little things. I'm telling you, I have, I have probably stories and stories and stories to share. I've gone through so much in my life. You know, even suicide from my, my daughter. Teenage suicide. You know, I have that under my belt, okay? I mean, it's like, you know, my own suicide. You know, things that I was, you know, doing. You know, that weren't, I wasn't living for God. You know, I mean, I, I, I just have been through so much. But yet, God has always been kind of like right there on the right side of me too. Showing me, you know, His goodness. Of, of like being an athlete you know I was, I was mentioning that I had all this other stuff inside of me but it was all this other stuff that was I had to deal with and I didn't want to deal with it back then so that was the reason why it led to drinking and, and going out and doing drugs and all that stuff but I'm telling you there's a hope there's only one hope his name is Jesus and he's the only one that can set you free from anything so I hope tonight that that by sharing this testimony that you will forgive yourself. You will forgive others. And, and you will bless them. And you'll bless yourself. Ask God to bless you. And forgive situations. Because I'm telling you, you know, we only hurt ourselves when we don't forgive. You think that you're hurting the other person by not forgiving? <laughs> you're only hurting yourself. So... I want to share that with you that when you forgive, it's like God's favor comes upon your life. His favor comes on, on your life. The blessing of God comes on your life. And, and it's the most amazing thing that when you start walking with the Holy Spirit, that he will take you places that you never thought you would ever go. I mean, I, I think about when I, you know, travel the world. And one of the best places that I went to was Israel. And Israel just totally just changed my life. It just, it just made me the, the woman of God that I am today. And I, and I give God the glory for that. It's, it's just, I'm just a vessel being used, okay? I'm just a vessel. You know, it, it can be anyone. I mean, there's so many of us that, that God wants to use. He wants to use you. He wants to bless you. He wants you to be a blessing to others. And so when I went to Israel, it was like I felt the Holy Spirit when I when I got off that plane. And when I when I went to all these different places, oh my gosh, it was like, wow, Jesus was here. And in one place, you know, we're we're in this place, and it was um, um it was a place where Jesus was taken before he was to be hung on the cross, and it was in this room. And you had to walk down these stairs and, and then come into this room. And all of a sudden, people are weeping, crying. And I hear the Holy Spirit say, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. And I'm telling you, I took off my shoes. Next thing you know, everyone else is taking off their shoes. Because we were standing on holy ground. And I'm telling you, it was the most amazing experience that anyone can ever experience. Is if you want to have a, a um, ministry or if, if you just want to get to know Jesus more or if you just want to get to know the Bible you go to Israel and Israel will set you free Israel it is the land of the milk and honey it is so beautiful it is just 
You feel the love of Jesus in this place. You see all the, where the disciples went, where David, you know, danced, you know, and, 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 and where he worshipped. I mean, it's just totally amazing to be in that place. You know, I just, I, I yearn to be in God's presence all the time. Because I know it's like he transforms your body, he transforms your mind, he renews your mind, he transforms your heart. He renews your heart every day. Because every day we're going to go through afflictions. Every day we're going to go through things that we don't want to go through. You know, some of us are having hard times with, with our husbands, with our spouses, with, with your boyfriends, girlfriends, you know, relationships with your children with your aunt, uncles, family members. I mean, there's so many things that you're going through. You're going through job situations, job crisis, money situations, finances, whatever it is. You know, the devil is trying to stop you from doing God's work. He's trying to put an obstacle in front of you. But I'm telling you, it's only through Jesus that can break any obstacle in your life like like how he's done with mine and that's the reason why I'm here because there's so many things that that God has in store for you he has so many plans for you he has a life full of plans for you it says in Romans 15 13 may the may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. I, I, I thank God for that because you know what? That's what he's done in my life. He's given me hope. And I want to share that hope with you. I want, I want to share hope with you. There is hope. Hope in God. Jeremiah 29, 11. I love this scripture. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Hallelujah. And not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So you know what? If you're going through a situation today, it's just a situation. Thank God right now because you know what? He has a greater plan for you. There is something else better for you that, that's what's happening right now. I'm telling you right now, I can share testimony after testimony and what God has done, his grace over my life. How I flew to all over the world and never ha haven't had a job in four years. How does that happen? <laughs> it happens through God and by being submissive to the Holy Spirit. Because you know what? The thing is, is that some of you say, well, I'm waiting on God. No, 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 no. It's the other way around. God is waiting on you. See, some of us have been um, comfortable sitting. We've, we've been sitting for so long that we think, oh, I'm just part of the church. You know, I'll, I'll go and pray for someone, go pray for that person, and, you know, that's good. No, that's not all God wants. God has so many, so many other things in store for you. You just don't even know all the gifts that he has in store for you, all the talents that you have that, that, that need to come out of you. I'm sharing my talent right now with you. There are so many of you that, that, that need to come and share your testimony. Women of God, I need you. I need you to fill up this, this couch area here. I want you to share your testimony with me. I want you to share a hope for someone else that needs it. There are young people that need a testimony. How do we get through these issues? How do you overcome these issues? How do you say no? How, how do you stop? from drinking you know how how do we you know if we're in a boyfriend girlfriend relationship you know how do we handle that as christians these are the things how do you handle uh your husband who who's coming home yelling all the time what is it that your husband needs why is he yelling all the time is it something that you're doing or is it something that maybe has been happening at work or in his workplace that that maybe he's so stressed at work that he needs a break. And, and then, you know, the thing is, as wives, then we, you know, get on our husband and say, Stop yelling! You know, I'm done, blah, blah, blah. And then you start arguing. Then the big argument starts. I mean, these are daily rituals. These are things that happen every day. So how, as women and men of God, how can we get along with each other? 
How can we submit to our husbands and yet as women still, you know, carry on a job and, and be fruitful in that job? These are the things that I want to discuss. You know, things that, that, um, that, that some people just don't know how to answer. You know, the marketplace. How do we deal in the marketplace as Christians? You know, how, how can we be loving and kind? And, and when we hear people cursing, you know, can we say something to them? Can, can, we, can we do that in a loving way? Yes, you can. You can, you can ask that person, hey, do you mind if, you know, you don't curse anymore? And, and people, sometimes people just speak and they don't even realize that they're cursing. And they're like, oh, thank you. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't know I was cursing. Okay? Because there are times they just, you know, the enemy is just keeping them riled up. Okay? So these are things that, that I am going to be talking about every Saturday. And, and about singleness versus loneliness. You know, how do you deal with being being single and how do you deal with being alone? You know, are you, you know, what is it that you're allowing um, loneliness to come into you? You know, is it um, maybe because you don't have that person next to you that, that you maybe feel insecure, maybe you don't feel worthy or something? I'm telling you, there's something for you on that. You know, husbands and wives, you know, intervention, you know, job, family. I mean, there's so many issues that, that as, as, as Christians, we need to share to believers and non-believers. This is how we're going to get the people in for the glory of God to build this kingdom. is by going and doing this and sharing the love of Jesus. So tonight, I just wanted to share that with you. And, and I just want, for those of you who are watching, I, I'm asking that you contact me. I need worshipers. I, I need a women of God here. This is going to be a panel of women. I'm sorry, men, but, um, you know, we might have you on every now and then. But, but right now, this is, I want young women. I want godly women. I want elderly women. I don't really care who you are. As long as you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you're living a holy life, I want you. God wants you. God needs you. If you've been impressed to be on TV, I'm telling you, this is an opportunity for you. God has opened up the door. As he has opened up the door for me, he is opening the door for you. So I just want to share that with you to give you some insight. And I hope that, that you will be blessed tonight and for future tomorrow. And, and I just want to have a, a, a prayer in closing right now. So, dear Heavenly Father... I just lift up my hands to you, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for this TV broadcasting, Father, that, um, that it will reach many people, Father, that it will reach the people that you need to reach, Father, by the words that are coming out of my mouth, by other people's mouth, Father, by worshipers, Father God, that, that your presence will be in each and every home, Father, on Facebook, on the Internet, online, Father God, that that people will see you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for your love. I thank you, Father, for the love, Father. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have filled my life with so much love that I can love all people, Father. And I pray that others will love, Father God. And I thank you, Father, that, that you are love, that you made love. Lord, bless each and every person, Lord. Heal their bodies, Father. Heal their minds, their souls, Father. Lord, let them be able to forgive, Father. And let their hearts be transformed, Father, by your blood and by your glory. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this ministry overcome by love, Father. And I just ask you to bless every person tonight, Father. And I surrender everything to you, Lord. All these people, Lord. I surrender the world to you, Lord. And I bless Israel, Lord. And I bless you, Father. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, in your loving and holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much Amen. for joining me tonight. God bless Amen. you.